Hey YouTube, uh, Rob back again. Well, it's that time again. Time to do my sort of end of the month uh, dividend beer update for you. Uh, I've got a bit of a stack here, um, so we'll, we'll make a start. Uh, I, I might try and sort of breeze through some of these. I won't necessarily talk about uh, too much in depth because uh, it's quite a bit here, so we won't. Um, I don't want to make a, uh, an overly long video. Uh, yeah, so we'll make, we'll make a start. Uh, I'll start with a couple of moves I didn't sort of like all that much, just to sort of, sort of get them uh, out of the way a little bit. Uh, this is actually a film that um, I'm pretty sure I had sort of heard a few people sort of recommend and they said they did quite like it and um, I mean I, I did sort of like, quite like the premise to it but it, yeah I didn't really think it was, or at least I didn't enjoy it, I mean it's, you know I guess we can't all make, can't all like the same sort of films and anyway so this is The uh, the Purge I think from last year, the year before or something like that, uh, this is for, you know I did quite like the premise to it and uh, I'm pretty sure I had sort of heard a few people sort of um, recommend it, um, but I don't know. I just didn't think it was really um, all that great. Really, I, I just sort of found a lot of sort of. I just had a few problems with it. Basically, the, some of the characters' actions I thought were really uh, silly, and um, I had sort of heard a few people sort of reckon that the villain was quite good too. But um, I didn't think he was really all that all that amazing. If you sort of you know <laughs> ask my opinion, um, I sort of found him to be. Very much a sort of a cliche. It's like he sort of wore a suit and sort of, you know, had some sort of like an education sort of thing and talked with big words. And but yeah, he was like a, you know, a psychopathic killer sort of thing. But yeah, he was really sort of, you know, polite and, you know, I don't know. To me, it was just sort of stuff I'd sort of seen back in the 90s, you know, sort of thing. So it was, to me, it was nothing really original, I didn't think. Um, the premise was quite good, though. Essentially, I suppose people know what it's about, roughly, just about sort of the. The government sort of puts this thing in the purge, basically, where they sort of you have sort of it's like twelve hours, so you can pretty much just commit any sort of crime you want, and it's you know for, in that time within that sort of time period and um, sort of thing. And um, but I just sort of found the execution wasn't really all that great. I didn't think, and um, I just sort of found some of the character actions was you know rather silly. Um, but I'm, you know, I have sort of I'm pretty sure a lot of people did think it was they did quite enjoy it, and you know that's fair enough. I mean, we can't all, all like you know sort of the same films, I guess. Um, but it's just for me, I just didn't sort of I don't know, I didn't sort of quite enjoy it as much as I was uh, hoping to anyway. So that's um, the purge. Um, onto another film. There's actually a movie that I I guess it's my own fault really. Um, it's a film that it's supposed to, I thought was. It was a classic, you know. Uh, I sort of got far, uh, sort of halfway through it, and then I realised this is, this must be a, a remake because this is not the you know, the original version of it, and um, it, it was just a film I just thought was absolutely terrible. To be honest, it was you know I wouldn't have sort of, sort of go as far as saying it's probably one of the worst films that I've, I've ever seen, but I thought it was pretty you know pretty goddamn terrible. That's uh, the pit and the pendulum. So this is definitely not the original. Uh, the Peter Cushion, or Vincent Price, that would have been Vincent Price, I think, in the original one. Uh, this one stars Lance Hendrickson, which I am a bit of a fan of. Um, I think he was not too bad in the film, but the rest of it I thought was just bloody awful. Sort of set during sort of the Spanish uh, Inquisition sort of thing, and uh, sort of the witch hunters sort of going around and basically sort of, you know, accusing people of being witches and sort of uh, torturing them until they sort of, you know, um, say that they are, you know, witches sort of thing, so then, then they sort of burn up the stake, you know, type, <laughs> vicious type stuff. Um, but I don't know, I just thought it was just terrible, I thought it was just a lot of just pointless sort of scenes to it and a lot of over-the-top sort of torture scenes to it and um, very sort of, I guess, sort of theatrical to it, I suppose, to it, very sort of, I don't know, it was, I don't know, I don't want to talk about it too much, but I just thought it was just bloody awful and I wouldn't recommend it. I haven't sort of seen the original version, but uh, I'm pretty sure that must be a thousand times better than this. This was just absolutely terrible. Okay, now on a film I did actually think was actually quite good. Uh, this one's uh, In a Lonely Place to Die um, with Melissa George, which I'm a bit of a fan of, and I have sort of talked about her before, I think, on my channel, uh, watching through other of her films. Uh, this sort of does remind me of another, another, like a Swedish film I did sort of watch once, where you essentially got these group of hikers, and they sort of hike up this... Um, like this sort of, um, up these sort of, you know, sort of steep sort of mountain faces, you know, um, what do you call it, uh, rock climbing sort of, you know, type thing. And in the sort of Swedish version, they sort of get to the top and they sort of have this 
kind of like a um, uh, chase, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre type thing with this, this sort of this sort of inbred family, hillbilly family, and they sort of you know end up sort of trying to kill people, you know, sort of sort of thing. Uh, this is a sort of similar. It sort of starts out the same. Sort of got these group of young people going sort of rock climbing, and they sort of get to the top, and uh, they sort of find this little girl sort of buried in in the ground in in this box sort of thing, and so they sort of dig her out, and then. The rest of the film is just sort of about them just trying to get back down the mountain sort of thing, get away from the the bad guys, I guess, and just trying to, you know, save this little girl sort of thing. And um, had a bit of a sort of a, I guess a bit of a deliverance sort of stop, uh, you know, type vibe to it as well. And uh, But it's what I actually quite like. I thought it was you know, rather sort of suspenseful and some good sort of action scenes to it. And um, just, yeah, just one I really quite, did actually quite enjoy. So it's probably one I would, uh, you know, definitely would recommend. So that's uh, in a lonely place. Oh, sorry. Lonely place to die. Got that wrong. Um, another another Blu-ray. It's actually one I've sort of showed uh, in my last update, but I hadn't sort of seen it at the time, and um, I did give it a watch and did actually quite enjoy it. You know, quite a lot. Uh, that's um, Under the Skin with uh, Scott Johansson. A uh, bit of a sort of a perhaps a nardy, farty type movie, I suppose. A lot of it's a film that doesn't have a lot of dialogue to it, and. A lot of sort of imagery, I guess, to it. So it's probably not necessarily a film for uh, everyone. Uh, but I did actually quite like it, though. Mainly, I suppose, because I wasn't really quite sure what was going to happen next sort of thing to it. So I was quite interested and, you know, quite engaged in it. Um, it's a film, plus, it doesn't... I don't really also want to spoil sort of the storyline to it, because that would kind of ruin it. And it's the kind of film you sort of need to sort of watch without really, you know, knowing what it's about type thing. And sort of about Scott Johansson here, and she's sort of like a, an alien sort of on Earth, and she's sort of drives around in a van and sort of picks up these um these men sort of thing um and sort of she sort of takes them back to, to her to her house sort of thing but we're not really quite sure what she does with them exactly i think i don't know that's not really explained uh very well sort of thing and um i just i think sort of over the film she sort of starts to sort of become a bit more human and um sort of thing and i don't want to spoil too much to it um but definitely one i did really quite like and um, that, the scene on, on the beach, I thought was just absolutely a really horrible scene to watch. Really, uh, sort of not necessarily bloody or violent, even though there's a bit of violence in it, but it's just really heartbreaking and definitely, I don't want to spoil it, but it's definitely a heartbreaking scene to watch, I think. Um, I did sort of hear that this, a lot of the, sort of the scenes in this were sort of, um, sort of like staged too. A lot of the actors, the male actors didn't know that they were being sort of picked up you know, by Scott Johansson, they weren't sort of part of the film. They were sort of filmed and then they were sort of, you know, asked if they want to be in it and, you know, sign like a press release type thing. So there's a lot of mumbling, I guess, by some of the you know, male actors in it, I suppose, in it. Well, actors, I suppose, are they? Um, but definitely a great film and definitely I would, perhaps one I would, perhaps would, um, would, would, <laughs> would, um, would watch again and one I would recommend. So that's uh, that one. Uh, On to another sort of horror-y type film, another another film rec recommendation, which I did actually, uh, you know, quite like a lot. A lot of people have been, you know, talking about it. Uh, this is uh, It Follows, which came with a slip cover. This is actually the American version from, I think, from Walmart, I think. I just, I did, I, but I did sort of buy it from a, an Aussie seller. Um, and I think it probably would have been cheaper for me to buy it, I think, to import it, I think. I did sort of work out, but... Anyway, uh, I was actually recommended by um, Chris Kitty, who's uh, a great YouTuber. He doesn't sort of make a lot of um, YouTube videos nowadays, but um, I think I've he was pretty, we sort of pretty much subbed each other at the same time when we sort of both started uh, YouTube and uh, both sort of comment on each other's videos and we do sort of you know send PMs on Facebook uh, occasionally too. A really great guy, and he definitely should make more videos. Uh, this is one he sort of did sort of recommended to me, and so I did sort of pick it up and. Uh, yeah, I did actually quite like it. I thought it was actually quite good. Um, I'm pretty sure most people know what it's about. Essentially, you've got this sort of this entity, I suppose, or something that sort of follows people around, and the only way to sort of get rid of it is to sort of uh, sleep with someone, to have, sort of have sort of sex, and sort of pass it on. Once you sort of do that, then the, the, this entity, this thing, will sort of stop following it, will sort of start to follow the other person, sort of thing. Um, another film, I guess, a bit like. Um, under the skin where you're not really quite sure what's going to happen next and you do sort of get quite engaged in it. Uh, I think uh, the only problem I had was perhaps I think towards the end I was, I was did sort of 
I was kind of getting a bit anxious and wanted to know what was going to happen. It was not really leading anywhere, I, I kind of thought. And the end doesn't really it's just sort of leave, leave, leave a few questions open as well, too. So that's the only problem I had with it. But it's probably, it, did, it did actually quite like the atmosphere to it, and then I did actually quite enjoy it when I was watching it. And um, Probably one I would perhaps watch again, actually. I did actually quite like it. So that's uh, It Follows. Uh, under another um, film classic, I suppose, sort of horror type one, more of a sort of a psychological thriller, I guess. And a film I probably, you know, maybe I should be embarrassed that I haven't sort of bought before. I was pretty sure it's in a lot of other people's, uh, you know, collections already. <laughs> That's uh, Silence of the Lambs, uh, which I have sort of seen a few times before, but it's been, you know, quite a number of years since I've sort of seen it. And um, a really great film. I did sort of watch it the other day and just thought it was, uh, you know, really good. Um, a lot of great scenes in it, and, uh, but I do actually quite like the opening sort of scene to it, um, which is where um, uh, Jenny Foster is sort of running through the forest, you know. I don't know, it's just something about that scene I, I do actually quite like. I mean, it's probably not necessarily probably anything amazing, but um, I don't know, just something about, I quite like about that, just sort of her running by herself in this sort of dark, sort of, you know, creepy sort of forest, you know, type thing. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure most people know, you know, I've seen this one already and know what it's about, but yeah, definitely a great film and um, yeah, I did actually quite like that one, or well, giving you a rewatch. Okay, I'll do a few uh, DVDs here, now I picked up a few um, uh, Katie Holmes movies, uh, this one here is Disturbing Behaviour, um, now there was a film by hers which I saw years ago and I only saw the end of it and I wasn't really quite sure uh, which film it was, so I was on a bit of a hunt perhaps to try and find that movie. Um, I think I ended up sort of buying three films before I found out <laughs> which film it was. Uh, this is the first one, Film Behaviour, um, which I sort of got halfway through and realised I had sort of seen before. Uh, it has a bit of a sort of a, is it The Village of the Damned? Is that the movie where there's, the little kids are sort of, in the village they sort of start to act a bit strange and get a bit p possessed or something in the... The adults aren't really quite sure what's going on. This is a similar sort of vibe with this, I suppose, too. Um, just, yeah, I won't probably spoil too much, but that's actually just sort of the idea to it. And they sort of, these young kids start to go a little bit strange, surely. Um, but yeah, it wasn't too bad. Did, you know, typical sort of noise movie, I guess, but, um, you know, I did quite like it. Uh, on to another Katie Holmes one. Uh, this one's uh, The Gift, directed by uh, Sam Raimi. It's got Katie Holmes, Kate Blanchett, uh, Keanu Reeves, and Hilary Swank in it. So there's a few, you know, a few stars in it. Um, I actually quite like this one. I thought it was actually uh, quite good. Uh, again, a film I think I got halfway through and realised I had, you know, sort of seen it before. Um, but I'd sort of forgotten that I'd, that I'd sort of seen it. Uh, essentially sort of about, I guess, um, Kate Blanchett. And she's sort of like a psychic in this sort of, sort of the small country town, I suppose. And uh, that's how she sort of, you know, makes a living type thing. And... Uh, anyway, uh, Katie Holmes sort of gets uh, murdered, um, and the police aren't really, you know, quite sure, you know, who did it, sort of thing. So they sort of turn to the psychic, even though they're not really, you know, don't like the idea of turning to a psychic. But um, I ask her, did she know anything about it? And she sort of says no, but she does sort of start to have these uh, visions, I guess, of you know, of you know, who it might be, sort of thing. And kind of did sort of lead um, lead her to believe that uh, you know, Keanu Reeves is probably the one that sort of. Uh, you know, murdered the Katie Holmes character, and uh, I won't to sort of spoil too much to it, but I thought sort of, you know, Kate Blanchett was actually really good as well. She put in a great performance, I thought. Um, yeah, so that's that one. Uh, and following on to the film that I did actually sort of have that scene in it, uh, this one's um, Abandoned. Uh, essentially sort of about Katie Holmes, and uh, she, um, she sort of going to this sort of, I think like a rich sort of, uh, college, I guess, and uh, but we sort of find that sort of a few years prior, her, her boyfriend's uh, disappeared, and no one's really, no one's really quite sure, you know, where he got to, you know, type thing. Um, and just sort of about sort of this sort of this detective comes along, and he sort of tries to sort of find out what sort of happened to him, and I won't sort of spoil too much, but um, yeah, I would actually quite like it though. Uh, I think I had sort of seen the end to it, so that kind of did spoil the movie, I suppose, in some ways, um, but. Definitely, yeah, I did actually quite like it, but I thought it was, uh, you know, quite good. Okay, now on to a few classic sort of golden age of um, Hollywood, I guess, you know, type movies. Uh, a couple of uh, Cary Grant movies. Uh, here's um, 
La Fete Remember with uh, Kerry Grant and Deborah Carr. Uh, I had something in my kitchen for a little while, but I've never sort of seen it before and uh, decided to give it a bit of a watch. Um, I think it's actually supposed to be number four ranked in the you know, best romance movies of all time. Um, I probably wouldn't sort of go that far. I thought I'd. I think I did quite like it, but I wouldn't sort of say it was one of the best, uh, well, movies I've ever seen or one of the best romance movies I've, I've ever seen. Not that I've sort of watched too many romance movies, I guess. Um, it's actually just sort of about these two. They sort of meet uh, on like a boat uh, on an ocean liner and um, sort of a bit of an affair, even though they're sort of, you know, both married to other people. And uh, they sort of have this thing where they sort of, you know, they've obviously the, you know, the void genes, so they decide to, uh, they say to each other, we'll, we'll meet again in, in six months' time. If we still feel the same about each other, we'll sort of meet on top of the uh, Empire State Building and, you know, we'll you know, get back together type thing in six months' time. And but, but, of course, one of them doesn't sort of end up making it, uh, you know, to the... They have, have a bit of an accident on the way and, you know, don't sort of make it. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I did actually quite like it. Um, the only problem I had, perhaps, what I thought were... Uh, Kerry Grant's performance, I thought, was a little bit sort of phoned in. I thought he's um, like he was sort of delivering the lines, but there was no real sort of emotion behind them. I didn't think. I don't know. I'm not sure whether that was just me, maybe, but I just thought he was really didn't want to be there. You know, that's kind of the impression I got. Uh, anyway, so that's uh, an affair to remember. Uh, onto one that's probably um, probably not, probably a bit sort of I don't know, I'd never sort of heard of it before. Uh, indiscreet. Again with um, Terry Grant and uh, Ingrid, yeah, Ingrid Bergman. Um, and I was sort of just romance film. Nothing really. I, I, I didn't mind it, but it was nothing really fantastic, I suppose. Uh, next one is um, North by Northwest, uh, directed by um, Aaron Hitchcock. Again, starring uh, Cary Grant. Just essentially about Cary Grant. He sort of gets has a bit of a mistaken identity, so he's sort of on the run. Very much like I suppose the you know the Harrison Ford movie the the Fugitive very much like that I suppose he sort of goes on the run to you know try and clear his name you know type thing um, yeah quite good though has some really great scenes to it and has the you know the infamous or famous um, sort of crop busting scene where someone's trying to kill him <laughs> by plane sort of thing um, but he has some really great scenes to it I thought and um, yeah quite good so that's North by Northwest. Uh, this one's actually a sort of a, a black and white sort of French film from 1959, a bit of a classic apparently. Uh, this one's um, Breathless, directed by Jean-Luc Godard, very sort of famous director. Um, this is supposed, supposed to be sort of one of the yeah, very sort of first sort of uh, sort of French New Way films and it was apparently a very sort of influential film as well. Um, I th thought it was just a load of wank, to be honest, if I've got to be really blunt. I just thought it was just... Crap, like it was really sort of, I don't know, arty farty sort of thing. And um, it's a film that sort of, you know, two characters and they just sort of very sort of dialogue driven and they just talk and walk around and nothing much happens really. Um, and I found the main sort of character here, he was just a real arsehole, I thought, and was asking the other, the, the lady here for sex all the time. And it's just, I don't know, I just thought it was really just. I don't know, I guess maybe at the time might have been very sort of influential and it did have some interesting sort of camera work to it, I suppose. And But I just thought it was just, you know, just really just shit. <laughs> I just couldn't get into it. I just thought it was really just a lot of crap. Anyway, I'm well, moving on. Uh, to a film that I did actually quite like, another sort of film classic. Uh, that's The Four Feathers, which I think is like a sort of a British sort of war film, I suppose. But you don't really sort of see many British war films these days. This is quite an old 1950s or something. I'm not quite sure really. Um, but I think it's actually, this is actually sort of double, it's like a remake of this. Uh, I think Keith Ledger did a remake of it a few, uh, well, yeah, quite a number of years ago, 10 years ago or something like that. Um, but this is one I actually quite like. Um, it's actually just sort of about the main character here and he's, the, film, the film sort of starts out with um, him sort of sitting around. He's like, he's like a boy basically. And his father's uh, sort of sitting around with his friends talking about war and, you know, how great it is and how it's, how it's a great thing to sort of die for your country and, you know, sort of thing. And um, so I'm sort of doing this, I think, because the father thinks that the son's a bit, you know, he's a bit of a, a sissy, I suppose. He's sort of more into poetry. He's not sort of as, you know, keen on the... doesn't appear to be very sort of keen on the idea of war type thing. And 
so he sort of starts telling these, you know, the father starts telling these stories about, you know, how great it is and going over the top and, you know, getting killed is, you know, a very great thing to do and, you know, that's what men do, you know, you know, type thing. Just suppose it's sort of supposed to sort of try and, you know, convince him this is, you know, this is the right thing to do, sort of, you know, join the army and, you know, be a soldier. But it sort of ends up having sort of the opposite effect. He just ends up being, you know, scared shitless, I suppose, of going to war. So he does sort of grow up and he does sort of join the join the army and does become a soldier. But, you know, he's... um. He's, uh, he's sort of, his, his platoon sort of gets uh, deployed to India and or sort of the day before he just he sort of chickens out and becomes a coward and decides not to go sort of thing. And, um, and he sort of, you know, after the other sort of platoon's gone, he, he receives this letter from other the other three, his sort of friends, I suppose, that sort of they sort of went off and they sort of sent him this letter and it's got these sort of three white feathers in it, which is which obviously means that he's a coward sort of, and they're calling him a coward sort of thing. And, um, and then he's, he's talking to his, his his new wife sort of thing, and you know, and she's sort of <laughs> kind of does the same thing. She sort of you know, sort of says, "Well, it that, doesn't really impress me that you're not that you haven't really gone off to war, you know, sort of thing." Um, so essentially, the four feathers, I suppose. So four people are sort of saying he's a coward, you know, type thing. Um, but he does sort of bot the bullet and does sort of go over there and ends up sort of rescuing the other three, sort of thing, and very much kind of. Like a, Something Private Ryan, maybe, type thing to it. Um, but it, it was rather a sort of long film, I suppose, but there were some really great scenes to it, I thought, and uh, very sort of great sort of, lots of, uh, you know, uh, sort of bold action scenes, big sort of, you know, landscape sort of scenes and big battle scenes and stuff like that. It was, you know, a bit of a classic sort of, you know, um, cinema scope, you know, type movie, I suppose. Uh, but well, I did, yeah, quite like it. I thought it was actually quite good and, uh, yeah, I did actually quite like it. That's uh, The Four Feathers. I uh, watched a um, Marilyn Monroe film, I think her very last film, called The Misfits, which I got for two bucks, as you can sort of see. A uh, film I thought was a bit, I don't know, a bit of a strange watch. I wasn't really quite sure what was going on in it exactly. Um, but you've got uh, Marilyn Monroe, Montgomery Cliff, and um, Clark Gable in it. They're you know, pretty big stars. Um... Yeah, I don't know what to sort of say about it. I can't really explain the storyline to it because another film I thought just sort of had a lot of dialogue to it and not much happens in it. Sort of thing. Um, onto a couple of animated ones um, from up on uh, Poppy Hill, which I had sort of heard was um, not a great film. Apparently, it's one of the sort of the, well, one of the worst uh, sort of Studio Ghibli films, even though they're all those films are pretty much just masterpieces, I suppose. Some people might say so. To get it, you know, even being the sort of the the worst lot is still, you know, still it still probably classes it, you know, quite a good film. Uh, I did actually quite like this one. I was actually quite surprised. I thought it was actually pretty decent. I was actually um, it couldn't understand why people thought it was not really all that great. I didn't think. Uh, I think it's just sort of about sort of set in nineteen sixty three and these two sort of school children, I suppose. They sort of. Um, I guess some sort of fall in love, I suppose, and um, but we sort of find that they're sort of their parents were sort of killed, or well, both their fathers were sort of killed, uh, you know, during the war, sort of thing. So they we sort of find a bit more of the backstory of of their parents and in, the, in a way they sort they are sort of linked together, sort of thing. It's, it's a really great story, I thought, and um, one issue quite like. I'm not quite sure why people thought it was not that great, but I quite liked it. Uh, Fine. And finally, um, another sort of film I heard really bad things about, but I didn't think it was too bad. Uh, that's uh, Turbo, which I was actually uh, running out at the moment, actually. Um, but yeah, I actually got this one. I had sort of heard it wasn't really all that great, so I had, you know, sort of been, uh, had, had sort of been in any rush to sort of pick it up. Um, but it was, I mean, the premise to it's rather ridiculous and <laughs> a bit silly, but um, I thought it was actually pretty decent. I did actually quite like it, really. Um, not sort of going too much detail, I suppose, but yeah, it was, I did actually quite like it. Anyway, that's my huge update. Uh, hopefully I didn't ramble on, uh, too much. Uh, yeah, if you've seen any of these films, certainly leave me, leave me a comment, tell me your thoughts, and that's it. Thanks for watching, and yeah, I'll see you all soon. Bye. Um, did apparently a lot of, you know, uh, sort of, uh, did a lot of, sort of, most, and sort of, you know, most sort of influential 
and apparently very sort of uh, influential. Can't say that influential. Uh, apparently it's supposed to be like a uh, sort of a, an if if oh, how the fuck do you say influential Inf influential influential film <laughs> influential film influential film. 